Hello, I'm Andrisim and welcome at Kerbal Space Program 1.0 Career Mode. Today, uh, I said what, today we were going to do uh, Moho, we're going to send that probe to Moho that's in orbit, and we're going to go to Minmus as well, but we're not going to go to Moho, I kind of lied about that one. Uh, I'll explain why in a bit, but we're going to go to Minmus, um, we're going to try and, you know, do orbit around Minmus, maybe do a little landing, get a load of science, because Minmus is prime, prime science territory. So I've spent a little bit of our science, and I've got advanced rocketry. Yeah, I think it's advanced rocketry. We got the uh, the low profile engine, uh, a side engine, and a sort of moderately sized liquid fuel tank. The reason I did that is because I had the science. I was like, you know what, this low profile engine is probably going to be useful. The Terrier is low profile unless we can like land and not destroy our engine because we don't have very large landing. Yeah, so that was the main reason for getting that one. And I had the science. I was like, well, I might as well it. It'll make my landing a lot easier. So let's go and have a look at what we'll be using today in the space plane hangar. Uh, let's load it. Uh, Minmus 1 manned landing sat. Uh, I'll explain the satellite bit in a bit. Right, so here we go. We should probably stop at the top. Uh, thank you everyone who point was saying, like, um, you know, why aren't you getting the science out of the things? Blah, 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 blah. That's because we didn't have the ability to EVA. We now have the ability to EVA. Um, so now we can actually get out, we can grab the science and we put it back in the capsule. Now the reason we were turning with the science instruments before is because we didn't have the ability to EVA, we couldn't grab them out, now we do. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this crew capsule back, it's got a heat shield on it, and we've got these side boosters that are going to be our sciencey things, but we're going to leave them. That's important. So, I've installed remote tech. And I'll come to why this is, we'll talk about this uh, over launching or something in particular, but what it does is it makes probes more complicated. Like we've got tech life support, which means that we have life support for our Kerbals, which makes Kerbals more complicated. We've now got a way to make probes more complicated. And I know, you know, some of you might be like, oh, why don't you make it hard? Why are you making it harder? And some people would be like, well, it's too easy. I've got a lot of people who have said both actually in the comment section. I'll be interested to see what you think, but uh, I think that once we make something harder with Kerbals, it becomes too easy just to rely on probes. So I want to make probes harder as well. Also more fun. So. Remote tech means that you need ability to contact via um, the ground station, via your uh, Kerbal Space Command or Space Center, KFC, um, the ability to contact whatever probes you send out. So you need to have a line of sight via satellites or whatever, um, with you know suitably long-range dishes to be able to contact them, otherwise you can't control them. And I've installed Remote Tech XF, which is a slightly easier version, it allows you to do a few things like deploy aerials where you can't otherwise. but. It's really good. It means you have to set up like networks, communication satellites. It's pretty awesome. What these are, is they're going to be left around Minmus, and they are communication satellites. I'd leave them. I was like, you know, if I'm leaving something, I'll make it worthwhile. It's got dishes on it. It's got solar panels. And they're going to be really important to us because they are going to be the things that allow us to transmit, you know, information and contact probes around Minmus, and allow us to land probes on Minmus, etc. These things are going to be really useful. <sighs> also, you can use command base. By the way, you can set up like this. this thing with like at least I think you need like three couples or more and you can like get them to control probes as well alternately as opposed to having to contact KSC but normally it's contact KSC it means you have to set up like communication satellites it's pretty cool it gives us the ability to you know actually take things to orbit that have got payloads like take a space shuttle up and deploy a satellite out of it and then take this I think it just gives you a lot more variety it gives you ability to do that but it is a complicated mod and you know some people are going to be like it's a little bit too much of a departure from vanilla some people are going to be like you know i like to see remote tech some people like you know the hardness it involves uh, ultimately it just means it's slightly hard to do probes but you know it doesn't add anything that changes the game it just means i have to do an extra step anyway so let's talk about what this is up here we've got our launch stage uh, our top stage our payload down here we've got a launch stage the launch stage is basically converted moho stage from you know the episode previously but instead of four it's got six and they've actually got asparagus staging rather than onion. So I'll explain that in a bit. But um, effectively, they've all got the, the SRBs on their side. They've got um, parachutes, so they should come back. And instead of being onion stage, which is the SRBs come off, the liquid fuels come off, then the center stage, what's going to happen is they are asparagusly staged in two sets of three. So SRBs come off, then three liquid, then three liquid, then the center stage. And they feed into each other. So... You know, they, they allow us to get a more smooth curve up with our thruster weight, and it means it's slightly more efficient. So uh, norm normally, by the way, if you're going to do asparagus, you do it 2-2-2, two, 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 and that would be a bit more uh, a bit more efficient, and, you know, but I was trying to go for a little bit less complex. Um, I want a little bit more simplicity, and I also want a slightly more delta V uh, at the early part. So, right, so up here, we've got our lovely satellites. These are feeding into each other. Um, there's four of them. Two of them feed into the other two, and then the other two feed into this, and each of them have got a fuel um, booster on them. The top payload area is really heavy in Delta V. It's got so much Delta V on that top area. The issue is just going to be getting up. So let's put Val in. I want to be using Val. Uh, Jeb's already been around the moon. I think after Jeb goes around the moon, it's fair enough that Val is going to be the first one to land on our planet. So she's going to be on Mimus, and uh, 
Hopefully, she'll be the first Kerbal to set foot on another body. So, uh, let's just load this. Loady, loady, loady. Tick, tick, tick. Tick, tick, tick. Here we go. We're on the launch pad, and um, everything is looking good. Okay, let's throttle up, and I think we're good to go. Three, two, one, bam! And we're off. Now, just be aware, by the way, I'm doing this entirely in post-recording because I screwed up the, uh, the non-post-recording, the live commentary. Uh, my microphone decided to reset its volume levels, and it blew my mind when I tried to listen to it. So, this is all post-recording, so what do you do? You get to have post me. Normally, I do a mix. But anyway, let's start tipping over. Um, the idea is the SRBs are going to give us a nice bit of a thrust to begin with, and you see that our thruster weight is going up past 2.2 there. Um, so let's just decrease our thrust a little bit. It'll save us on the liquid, it'll save us a little bit of fuel. Uh, I don't need to go particularly fast, I just want to, you know, try and get this boost going. Um, the idea is that we're going to be we're gonna be really hard up getting this to orbit. We're at our max part count, and I know I said we wouldn't hit that for ages, we're at our max part count. We're just shy of our max weight limit for the pad. This thing is going to crawl to orbit, and if we make it, it's going to be tight. It's going to be really tight. I cannot emphasize enough that this is going to be an incredibly tight one. I couldn't even afford a fairing for the top, I don't think I've got that unlocked yet. Um, so it's not the most aerodynamic either. This is going to be one hell of a difficult crawl to orbit. Um, I'm going to speed it up. Let's get four times speed after the boosters attach, because it's going to be a very long crawl to orbit, so... Uh, I think the boosters are nearly done. I think I did thrust them, by the way, just to make sure we didn't go over to at least at the very beginning stage of thrust weight. And there we go, boost off, and faster, the parachute's deploying. So, most of this is uh, reusable, at least if the parachute and CMR are suitably okay. Now this is asparagus staging in action, bam, three come off, but they fed into the other three, the other three are entirely full, you can see the fuel gauges there are full, that means effectively you're not carrying up an empty fuel tank, that so you get rid of fuel tanks as soon as they're empty, or as close to. So now we're uh, going up, and you can see that we, our first weight isn't crazy high. And we're not actually turning over as quickly as we'd like. Now, normally I'd be a little bit more hard over. There we go. We're turning a little bit later. But uh, it's not its not the easiest crawl to orbit. You can see that we're not getting particularly high. Our apparatus is still fairly low for how high we are. Our apparatus is just about to reach 40, and we're at 32. This is certainly crawling to orbit. And the issue is we can't go up too high, because then we'll have to push too hard across the other time. There we go, down to center stage. Good, they're deployed. And uh, we also can't go too far across because we won't get out of the atmosphere enough. So we need to really play this one perfectly. Up to 50. But that was only on 50. Oh, my God. Seriously, this is this is going to be close. Uh, I like having the delta, the delta, all the data from uh, Mecture, by the way. I like being able to look at the data. and Especially when it means I don't have to go to the map screen. I mean, Kerbal Flight Indicator stuff and the Kerbal Flight data is great. But I like a little bit more data from Mechcheb. That's one of the reasons I love Mechcheb. Um, I don't use it so much of the automated stuff a lot of the time. But... Looks like we're... You see, I'm, I'm pointing up here still. I'm trying to push my periaps away. This is an important thing. I mentioned it in one of my tutorial videos. Is that if your periaps is coming up too quick... To, uh, Apple, sorry, is coming up too quick towards you. You pull a little bit up, and that will push it further away. So I'm just trying to make time there. It is less fuel efficient, but I needed the time. So now our uh, Apple Apps is just about to go out of the atmosphere. It still isn't out of the atmosphere, by the way. And we're so close to Apple Apps. There we go. It's out of the atmosphere. We can push over. Uh, time is one minute periaps. I think we're good. That stage is about to eject. And there we go, we're on our uh, transfer stage. So we just got to circularize in the transfer stage. I'm going to put a node in. Very nice having the ability to have nodes. I'm speaking way too quick also. Uh, nodes, I, I've missed them. I've missed them so much. It's nice to get an idea, by the way, of that. And it's like, the estimated burn is, I don't care. It, it's always wrong. So comparing the delta V that Mechjeb tells me to burn time allows me to know how long I have to burn for, because you see that Mechjeb gives me that data as well. That estimated burn time is bollocks. But, ooh, we've got EVA reports and stuff. Now being able to EVA, we can get so many EVA reports. Um... This can be a mate, but I'm, I'm going to wait for the burn here. I'm not going to EVA out before the burn in case I screw up and then miss the burn, because we are flying very low, very tight. But there we go. We're now circularized. And uh, let's let's do some science, I think. Yeah. We get EVA reports. I think you get EVA reports for each biome, even when you're in orbit, so which is nice. So we've got a lot of uh, science we can do. So let's just get out and grab us off our first EVA. This is our first EVA entirely, by the way. First EVA report. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Lots of science. It's not very much, but, you know, going to Minmus will provide the opportunity for a lot more science, and I'm looking forward to that. So, a little bit of science there. EVA reports, you can stack them. It's crew reports, you can't. So, where is Minmus? Over there. I think we're slightly too far ahead now or to hit Minmus. We're going to have to go around again. Hmm, yeah. Ooh. Minmus is inclined, by the way, so uh, getting to Minmus is a little bit more involved than going to the moon. Mainly just because it involves a uh, inclination change. So, effectively, for the Minmus, you want to do the same as you do for the Moon, by the way. You burn when it's on the horizon, 
give or take. Uh, and you also then have the Boon Inclination Burn, so let's get another EVA. Sweet! I mean, I could just use the EVA button at the top. Pass me. Pass me. You're, you're, you're failing on this one. Oh well. Um, yeah, we'll grab that. Well, I can transmit EVA reports for 100% science. Not that they really need to. I mean, it takes a lot of electricity to do that, and uh, these solar panels are pretty inefficient. Uh, they're pretty small. Well, they're, they're efficient, they're just small. Uh, they don't have very much uh, surface, so... Another EVA report. We're getting really spoiled. The fact that we're just flying so fast because we're so low means that EVA reports are just coming in one after the other after the other. We're going to get, like, you know, shore, desert, mountains, highlands, grasslands, ocean. Alright, let's sort our maneuver node. So just getting this maneuver node perfect. Uh, we have enough life support on board, by the way. If you see just below the decoupler on the center stage, that's actually life support. Um, let's get another EVA. We've got enough life support for 20 days. 20 days of food, 20 days of water. 26 days of oxygen, and uh, electricity should be replenished, but the important thing is we've only got 20 days worth of life support. I could have had more, but I emptied the tanks a little bit just to make it a little bit lighter, a bit more Delta V. So let's uh, get the second maneuver node in. So, um, by the way, I'm using the second maneuver node on the first maneuver node to be able to do the inclination. Inclination is best changed at your ascending or descending nodes. So now we know that we've got to burn, you know, this direction in this time, and then after that we know we've got another node. So just going to speed up time, I think, and we'll uh, get to that node and be able to do our burn. Should be pretty good. I'm just hoping that we get some more science before then. So the reason we can't really go to Moho is because we don't have antennas long enough range to hit Moho. And even if we did by the time the probe got to Moho, the probe wouldn't be able to contact us because it doesn't have a long enough range antenna. We need more science. We need more science. We need to upgrade the, VA, uh, the um, research lab thing um, before we can actually do that. So let's advance forwards. Uh, by the way, warp to node, not always the best plan. Uh, warp to node doesn't really give you a big window. It gives you one minute advance. I think it used to give you 30 seconds. It now gives you a minute advance. Our burn's actually going to be quite a long time, so I think it's probably going to screw us up. I have the advantage of knowing from uh, future. Past me doesn't. I've still got this going at four times speed because it's kind of a little bit slow getting in and out. And I was playing this very slowly, just waiting for the biomes to appear. And you see me slowing down there, waiting for a shoreline biome to appear. And here we go. Are we doing warp to node? And here comes a mistake. Time warp complete. Yeah, no, uh, that's not good enough. Let's burn, but you can see that our burn is actually like, oh, now you're burning? Yeah, it's going to take you far longer than that. So it's going to be inefficient. We're going to lose a little bit out, especially with such a... It's kind of a mediocre... It's, it's not mediocre. It's just kind of underpowered. The Terry is underpowered. I mean, it's short, which is great, but it's underpowered. You can see our uh, apoaps is going up very slowly, and we've already missed our... Uh, uh, well, we missed our apoaps, which is now our periaps. It's going out so slowly, which means we're going to be late to Memmus. And we are running fairly tight on the life support systems. Luckily, we've got plenty of Delta V, right? This this stage has plenty of Delta V. The four side tanks, it has got good amounts of Delta V, right? Really good amounts of Delta V. We could probably go to, like, Juna, apart from the fact that Cobus will be dead by the time we got there. But we could probably go to Juna. So let's warp a little bit ahead. Ooh. Let's get a material sturdy. Let's get an EVA report. Sweet. Put that back up there. Whoops. And let's fly up and grab it out of the materials bay. So we're getting the science out of the materials bay so we can bring it back without having to bring back the materials bay because that way we will not destabilize the craft coming in the atmosphere. We can just crash it through the atmosphere and it should be fine. However, it will cost us more money because we will not be saving the parts, right? Without saving the parts, a little bit more difficult. And I don't have to do that gimmicky spinning around as we come back in to dissipate our heat thing because it's kind of gimmicky. Um, right, we're good. Just looking for Mims there. So... Advancing towards this maneuver node, we don't have to burn exactly on it, it's a fairly large orbit now. Uh, and looking at our life support, you can see we've got like 20 days, and it's telling us it'll take us about just more than 10 days to get to Memmus. I'm really dubious, so let's do our burn. And you see here, yeah, there we go, 11 days. That's not good enough, that takes us over the half time to get there. And that's, you know, if we don't take time to slow down and land, we're still beyond halfway, so we've got to burn again. We've got to burn to try and make sure we are close as possible to Minmus and as soon as possible. So effectively what I'm doing here is just making sure the inclination's bang on, maybe and then fiddling with it a little bit. So pulling the radial across, trying to get it close early in the orbit. So effectively, the idea is we need to get to Minmus earlier, which means that Minmus needs to be earlier in its orbit. Right? So here we go, fiddling with it. Um, you can see that we're actually hitting it on the descending, so we can maybe keep pushing it further back to get it on the ascending. So we're still hitting it after Apple Apps. What we need to be doing is hitting it on Apple Apps or before. 
Um, still, come on. We got this. That's better. That's a lot better. About basically down to nine days there. Let's do that burn. This is an important thing, by the way. It's, it doesn't make a difference to most people, but if you've got, like, a time constraint, especially if you've got, like, life support, uh, it does help. You can actually just, you know, play around with this. It is more Delta V intensive, though, but whatever, you know. It doesn't really matter to us. We've got a lot of fuel. We are light on life support. We are pretty, pretty flush on fuel. We've got a lot of fuel in this top stage, so ultimately, if we have to, you know, just go straight past, no time, don't land, do science, we can do that. We can just abort, and we can do a return. Let's uh, just try and get this as close as possible. I don't want to have to be fanning around doing slow burns or whatever when we get there. I want to be, you know, in, out, done, science and Science end? Science nid. Anyway, let's get rid of the uh, Moho maneuver note. It's like, yeah, you should be going to Moho. Oops. Anyway, thank you, by the way, to everyone who in the last episode who was like, you said it for eight minutes rather than eight hours advance warning. Thank you. Food's running out. There we go. We're in trouble. Um, yeah, I, I changed it. Thank you very much to those people. I didn't actually notice that one. Thank you for the shout. And we're now at Mimus. Our first visit to Mimus, it's, uh, it's an important moment for Kerbal Kind everywhere. Well, we've got a whole bunch of science to do. You see, we've got crew, EVA, material study, goo, temperature. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, oh, that's a, that's a good amount of science. That's a good amount of science. What about the goo? Good amount of science. I'm liking it. I, I re really appreciate the science there. Let's get a crew report. Awesome, let's send that. No comms... We've got a comms device. Okay, yeah, open the comms device up. Maybe you'll send this time. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, so, crew report. Let's do a crew report and send. Oh, this is, yeah, this is remote tech. This is the problem I bumped into, a remote tech. Um, it's like, yeah, you can't contact the space center because the space center doesn't have an antenna reaching you. And you don't have any satellites. And you maybe can't get line of sight to it through the planet. So... This this is an issue. Um, however, I think I've got a cunning plan for this one. So we can't get to KSC. Uh, it doesn't have a long enough antenna, and we can't get to KSC because KSC is on the wrong side of the planet. By the way, uh, Rotec XF gives you the option to turn off ground station getting blocked by the own planet. So effectively, the entire of Kerbin's transmitting radio as opposed to the ground station. I've turned it back on because I like the idea of setting up the the satellites, but. It's a little bit unrealistic in that you could only have one transmitter in one place on the planet as opposed to just ping it off from any direction on the planet. Let's do a bit more science, but I've got an idea for this, right? Um, what if we use the MOHO probe that's in orbit as a relay? Because that's in a low orbit, and it's got two antennas. It's got the satellite um, directional dish. The dish can get to us, and it's got a omnidirectional antenna, which can get to Kerbin. So if we use that as a relay station, we can send our science. Boom! Done. We're sorted. All right, we've got a plan there. Um, see, and this is one thing I love about remote tech, is that you can come up with these plans to try and get around things. You can be like, right, what if we reorientate the dish towards this and ping the signal off of... It's just so much fun, because you don't have to level to think on. Uh, it is a lot more complicated, though. Maybe not the beginner's typey thing to think about, but definitely fun. So let's grab all our science. Um, yeah, remove the data. We don't have a scientist on board, so we can't reset it. I'd rather have a pilot. Although that said, I do have MechJeb, which allows me to point at a certain direction, but I'm trying not to overly misuse that. Um, it is a power that is unique to pilots, and you can go, oh, I don't need pilots anymore because I have remote, I have MechJeb, which will point me to prograde, retrograde, etc. That's a pilot ability. Problem is, I don't like the pilot ability because it always overshoots. It's crap. It just go, it always overshoots, and you end up having to time warp to stop your rotation. So I, I much prefer being able to use MechJeb for it, and the MechJeb button's bigger, easier to hit. And it gives you easier to uh, point at certain things. It's got a lot more abilities for that. But we're going to call it here for this episode. I know the episodes conti basically consist of going to Minmus, but I want to show you the, the vessel. I want to show you some of the more stuff about remote tech. I want to talk about that in detail. Um, and, you know, for most people, you know, coming to this, maybe they're coming to it new, they want to see it in a bit more detail. So going to Minmus, slightly further, inclination change, same rules that really apply as the moon, but it's a lot easier to land on, which is why we're going here. Anyway, I've been Andrew Lissing. If you enjoyed, please remember to like the video. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing, and let me know how you're thinking about how hard it is. Too hard? Too easy? Whatever. But uh, yeah, until next time, and thank you for supporting the series, stay shiny.